Hello students, today we will learn class 9, Environmental Education, Chapter 10, Sources and Classifications of Waste. So, to know more of this chapter, let's learn the topic first, and also what are waste. So, the useless leftover or discarded materials, they are called as a waste. So, by waste, we imply the material which is no longer required or which has become useless. Only that, even the dead plants and animals, the products of metabolic activities of humans and other animals, they are also called as a waste materials. And even the byproducts of various industrial units, which are useless and are not required, are also considered as a waste. So these materials discarded by estuaries or dabas and restaurants come under the categories of this waste. Not only that, even the spillovers of the pesticides and herbicides which are sprayed on the agricultural crops in order to kill the pets or the unwanted plants are also called as a waste. And all or the unserviceable articles at home, offices and other establishments will also be termed as a waste. Although all waste materials are not harmful products, but majority of them, they are harmful. So it is desired to treat the waste before it is led to the atmosphere, soil or the water. So water treatment and management plays a key role or important role in keeping the environment clean. So now let's come to the main topic of this chapter that is the sources of waste. Now let's see under that there are different sources of waste. So now here you will learn the different type of wastes that humans have produced. That is number one, the domestic sources. Domestic waste are nothing but it is the waste that produced from homes. So these domestic waste may be also studied under the following subheads that is the kitchen waste. So under the kitchen waste you can see that the waste, peels, etc. of the vegetables and fruits that are obtained during the preparation or and cooking of food in the kitchen, they are also called as a waste. Even the leftover or the unconsumed food that we throw out or that we the discard is also called as a kitchen waste. If we are using wood or a coal as a fuel, then the ash that are obtained by burning these fuels are also called as a kitchen waste. Now comes the human excreta. These products are being released by the bladder or the bowels of the humans by the metabolic processes. And next is the rubbish. So the broken and worn out articles like broken glass, the utensils, newspapers, magazines, empty cartoons and the boxes, even the broken wooden and plastic furniture etc. They are all termed as a eh, rubbish. And next is the most important point that is the plastic bags. So this is the biggest nuisance in modern culture as all the shops supply their articles in a very attractive and printed and also the colorful bags. After these articles are being used, we simply throw away these bags. So these articles of daily consumption like milk, bread, curd, cakes, candies and pulses are come in packed in plastic bags that are discarded after being used. So these plastic bags are one of the biggest waste materials and are also they are known biodegradable. And each family uses and throws a tons of plastic bags in its lifetime. Generally, we take no special steps to treat this domestic waste. It is simply dumped on the land. So the municipal authorities sometimes designate some area for landfilling. So the waste is being released there by the persons who pick up waste from houses. So there has been some improvement in the situations in the recent years in the cities and also in the small towns. So what happened is that 
Earlier, families used to place the refuse outside their house, and the flies and mosquitoes they breed on them, causing the epidemics and diseases. Until the municipal sweeper came and picked the rubbish away, so now there has been a awakening in the people towards the cleanliness. But now you can see some of the changes that has been takes place. That every street has now engaged with the waste collector or the residents collect their waste in the containers and hand over to the waste collector in the morning. So the waste collectors. Dumps the waste at the designated place. Now comes the industrial waste. So waste be released by the industrial units, and during the preparations of the products, they are called as a industrial waste. So this is being discussed under the following heads again. That is the metallurgical industries, paper and pulp industries, textile industries. Chemical industries, food processing industries, petroleum industries, and also nuclear reactors. So now we will explain all this in detail. So let's see what is the metallurgical industries. Now the metals that are being extracted from the ores, the ores are contaminated with a lot of impurities like the aluminium and also the silica, which have to be removed. In order to obtain the metals using the flux, so the impurities that are obtained in the form of slags like calcium silicate, and if these metals is being extracted out of scrap, then the waste constitute dust and also a carbon. Now comes the paper and pulp industries. So about fifty percent of the total wood used for paper productions. Is being ejected as a waste material, and this is in the form of wood chips, barks, and cellulose fibers. Now comes the textile industries. Now a number of chemical treatments are to be given in the preparation of yarn, and the effluents are alkaline in nature. So a lot of yarn particles. Are being formed during the spinning, which float in the atmosphere and thus produces a waste or pollute the environment. Now comes the chemical industries. So in chemical industries, what happens is that the starting materials are contaminated with the dust and other impurities, which have to be removed. So these impurities they constitute a lot of waste. And also the byproducts of the chemicals industries, they are all waste. For example, in the preparations of coal gas, like ammonia, coal tar, and coke, they are all the byproducts. That means they all are the waste. And next is the food processing industries. So in the food processing industries, like jams, pickles, biscuits, fruits, drinks. Carbonated drinks, frozen vegetables, which are processed in the industries, they are being ejected a lot of waste in the form of peels, cores, etc. So these vegetables, they are scrupulously washed to be free them from dust and also mud, etc. And next we have the petroleum industries. So in these petroleum industries, the Fractionation of petroleum, the different products that are being obtained at different temperatures in the fractionating column. A number of organic acids and also a sulfur compounds are being removed from these petroleum industries as a waste. And next we can see here is the nuclear reactors. So now in these nuclear reactors. The electricity is being generated in the nuclear reactors by the bombardment of the heavy radioactive isotope with fast-moving neutrons. So, a heavy water is being used in order to control the speed of these neutrons. Therefore, a waste materials in these nuclear reactors are the 
use heavy water and also the fission products of the original radioactive isotope. So now the waste in such cases can also be a radioactive. So this special care has to be taken in order to dump the waste of these nuclear reactors. It has to be dumped a few meters underground to stop the radioactive rays that is emitting from the nuclear waste and pollute our environment or which may bring harm to our environment. And next we have the agricultural waste. So let's see what are some of these agricultural waste. That means they are the fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, all these are the agricultural waste. So this is because these compounds can be washed down to the groundwater and pollute the underground water table. So these fertilizers, they are nothing but they are the compounds of nitrogen, phosphorus and also a potassium such as urea, ammonium nitrate, potassium nitrate and also a phosphates. These fertilizers, they provide a fertility to the soil by giving vital elements of nitrogen, phosphorus and also a potassium but by natural drainage they can reach the underground water table and also pollute the water and next is the pesticides so these pesticides are nothing but they are the toxic substances which are being added to the soil or sprayed on plants to suppress or eliminate the harmful forms of life or which is being disturbed to the crops. Now, these pesticides can be classified into different further following points that is, insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, and also a rodenticides. So, let's discuss this in detail. Now, that is the insecticides. So, these insecticides are being used to kill insects which spoil the crops. There are three types of insecticides that is organophosphates, organochlorines and also a carbonates. So these compounds like DDT, BHC that means the benzene hexachloride, aldrin, chlorine and organochlorines. So these are the group of compounds which finds the maximum used. Now the DDT is being common insecticides which affects the nervous systems of the vertebrates and also even the invertebrates and this compound is not easily biodegradable and therefore it is not environmental friendly and some of the examples of the organophosphates insecticides are the parathiont and the malathiont now comes to the fungicides so these fungicides are nothing but it is the chemicals that is being used in order to kill the fungi. And some of the examples of fungicides are the O-phenol, captained, and foflet. And even the mercury containing compounds have also been found to cause a health problems. Now comes to the herbicides. These herbicides are nothing but it is the chemicals that is used in order to eliminate the unwanted plants. So there are selective and non-selective herbicides. So these selective herbicides are like ferrosulfate that is used to kill only the specific plants but non-selective herbicides like sodium arsenate kill broadly all of the plants. So generally these herbicides have very little toxicity to mammals but there are herbicides which are quite harmful even to man. Now comes to the rodenticides. So these rodenticides are nothing but they are the chemicals that has been used in order to kill the rodents like rats and mice. And some widely used rodenticides are norboromite and stricine. And next we will discuss about the farm animal waste. So these farm animal waste which are nutritionist compounds and they are very important fertilizers for the soil but when these wastes are being produced in large quantities some of them may seep into the underground water table and pollute the water 
Also, even the animal waste may be carried into the water bodies. In both cases, it causes problems and under this there is sediments and also a biomass. So these sediments are nothing but it is the soil and the minerals that may be blown away by the storm or washed away by the flood water and deposited as, as sediments. And the biomass, these biomass are the parts of plants after plucking vegetables and fruits husk after removing pulses and food grains are the examples of the biomass which is also an agricultural waste.